Hello, YouTube. Okay. So, I finished up my wife's little revolver, doing the Duracoat on it. Ended up turning out pretty good. Uh, shot it. Shot very good. Um, these are nice, solid little revolvers. Uh, very easy to assemble and disassemble. Um, one note I will note down, though, is that this pin started working its way out as I was shooting it. And I was shooting a good, you know, 10, 15, 20 rounds through it. And I noticed this was starting to ease out. So, you want to watch that. Uh, other than that, uh, good shooting little gun. Uh, Duracoat is one of those things that... Uh, is very picky uh, they tell you you don't need to sandblast it you can just do like a uh, degreasing and then scrub it with like a scotch bright pad type thing like that kind of thing uh, which I did and uh, I still had problems getting it to stick to this um, and I'm already seeing some scratches and some areas where it's uh, starting to come off like right here uh, so if you're serious about duracoating uh, and and getting really really good results, first of all, airbrush. You definitely need an airbrush or a decent paint gun. Um, the one that I used was this uh, Pache airbrush. Um, I used this to begin with. I used that on this this little gun that I did here. This little piece of junk, Jimenez gun. Um, the uh, siphon feed on these airbrushes does not work real well. Um, it's it's okay for covering you know, a little bit, but the airbrush that I found really worked, and I don't have it together now. Uh, it's got it apart and cleaning it. But the uh, Renegade Chrome, the Badger airbrush, uh, gravity fed, cleans out easy. Really, really nice um, airbrushes these work great uh, so a decent airbrush or uh, or setup for uh, for spraying is good uh, if you're going to be doing Duracoat uh, and the mechanical cleaning they say works I might have just not done it as well as I should have and that's probably the case because I'm sure there's guys out there that do it um, and it doesn't you know turn out horrible um, but this is one of my first jobs. This this other gun was the first one. I got this gun specifically for uh, playing around with Duracoat, and it seems to actually be sticking pretty well on this little gun. And it shoots pretty well for a little, you know, hundred dollar piece of junk, twenty two. Um, fun little gun to shoot. Uh, but if you're gonna be doing serious Duracoating, uh, I would definitely suggest. And this is one of those things I'm going to end up doing, I'm sure, uh, getting the blast cabinet. You know, at least like the cheapo from Harbor Freight. Blast cabinet that comes with the gun and everything. Uh, and get and get yourself a blast set up so you can uh, do sand blasting um, if you're going to be Duracoating. I think that's probably the best the best way to do it. Just because it's a, a way to get the, the surface really, really... Um, uh, roughed up and mechanically cleaned so that uh, the Duracoat will stick. Uh, I think Duracoat's a good product. Uh, probably uh, more me just being new to Duracoating uh, that that is the reason this didn't turn out as good as it could have. And there's also discoloration on here. I'm, I've never seen anybody uh, make comments about that. Uh, when I was cleaning the gun, I thought ah, maybe it's just some powder that's going to come off. Uh, but that maybe is because I didn't let it cure for the full three, four weeks or whatever. Uh, but you know, this will this will be good for a first, you know, first time shooter for the wife, uh, and she's she's happy with it. Uh, ended up going with the titanium uh, as the second color uh, because she saw that uh, um, hogue pink, which was bright. I think there's some showing through right here. Yeah, that bright pink right there, hogue pink. Uh, she saw that when I got a couple parts painted. She said, yeah, let's not do that. Um, so, ended up uh, stripping things off. Um, and, incidentally, stripping, if you if you need to strip uh, Duracoat, uh, some of the lacquer thinner, soak the parts in there, it just lifts right off. Um, I'm sure it'll maybe take a little bit more time. 
uh, if you let it cure for the full, uh, you know, three or four weeks, or if you've got a, a dura coat on a gun that's been sitting for a while, uh, probably have to let it sit a little bit longer. But it, it, pretty much within an hour, uh, all of the dura coat was bubbling up and coming off this um, when I uh, took it down to, to repaint it because the first time it just looked like crap. Uh, but anyway, that's that's it for uh, for this for this gun. This is a fun little gun. I mean, it's it's a piece of junk, but fun little gun to shoot. Little 22, and it's definitely got its design flaws. That little piece of plastic right here, uh, I had to put that on because um, it's not the right angle if you have a full magazine because of the way that you know the 22 uh, bullets will kind of you know um, they they're not you know same width at one end as they are the other so it ends up they kind of curve down around I'm sure you know what I'm talking about um, and it just was not at the right angle on that feed ramp so I ended up uh, putting some uh, plastic on there with some plastic weld um, fun little gun to shoot and one of my other acquisitions since I'm recording a uh, little uh, 38 special Smith & Wesson uh, revolver this was a lot of fun to shoot great little gun to shoot I love these old revolvers they're just uh, really solidly built this one I haven't been able to get a definitive from Smith & Wesson on it but I believe this serial number on the bottom here um, from what I've heard from uh, people who know the serial numbering conventions of uh, Smith & Wesson uh, it's probably uh, made right around 1961 so nice old gun um, lots of fun to shoot nice little pocket pistol uh, I'll carry this around just sometimes because I want to you know a little change from my uh, my uh, Smith & Wesson bodyguard which is my main CC gun um, but lots of fun Lots of fun. I love these old uh, revolvers, and Smith and Wesson just does them great. Uh, so that's pretty much it. And definitely bluing, missing here. Definitely not going to do a Dura coat on this. This is just a nice old gun. I'll keep this in good condition and shoot it every now and then. Uh, but that's pretty much it. That's the end of uh, Dura coating the wife's new revolver. She hasn't shot it yet. But, you know, as soon as we get someone to watch the kids for a couple hours, we'll go and we'll do some shooting. And uh, she's got her safety course lined up and everything like that. So, uh, that's that's it. Um, nothing else from this side. I don't have any more plans on, uh, on Dura coating, but maybe I'll find some stupid uh, subject to upload a video on. Just because everybody seems to be doing it these days. YouTube, I'm going to upload my freaking videos, eh? So, anyway, that's that. Bye.